guys, welcome back for another 55 update. So I just got back from LS Fest West. There's gonna be more to come on the Holly once, once Holly gets them out on their page. So can't wait to share that with you. But anyways, back at the shop here. Um, I know dad has got a ton of work done. I've seen the pictures, got to get the updates, but let's go make sure he took that video tour successfully and check it out. And I can't wait to share with you guys his YouTube content for this week. Oh, look at all the boxes. That means stuff definitely delivered. Let's see. Got tons of stuff going on here. Mikey! Hello, hello, YouTubers. What's up, content creators? We are where have you been? Yeah, where have you been? LS Festing. Look, Mom's even GoProing right now. We're not yes. creating content. We're creating masterpieces and content. Hey, I like it. I like it. And he got on record. Okay, we need an update. I know we're working on gas tank here. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's go look at everything else you got done. This is our dry sump tank. Dry, oh. We, we don't want 10 quarts of oil. We, we want, want 40. 50. Oh, I was going to say 50. Okay. We got to one up Joe Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Barry, you Joe hear Barry, that? Joe Barry, you hear that? You got to have a hundred quarts now. <laughs> Joe Barry, we're coming for you. So, anyways, gas tank. This is looking good. Yeah, hey, looks awesome. I like that. So, if I can just weld it up without scratching the pretty finish. Now, I hate to even touch it. It does look nice. But anyway. There's okay, some so video we'll for you. Oh, there is video. Yeah, there's video and in time lapses for you. Oh shoot. Of creating the shape and stuff. You want to see it in? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, I know there's a lot to talk about here, but there's a lot done on the car. Then seeing the updates. I don't remember where we were at. Um, you were just working on the wheelie bars last week, so. They were not on the car. They were not even finished welding when I left. So okay. lots to see. Car. Lots to see. Okay, I already see a different going on up front. Let's start here. It's not a lot different. It's just I said a difference. A difference. Yeah. So yes. this was actually the last thing I did. I started back there. So you're starting at the wrong end of the car. Oh crap. Okay. But it'll work. <laughs> so got the control arms built, and I made I made these pieces out of chrome molly. We got these used struts, not these. The ones we're going to use are used struts, and he had half the control arm. He had the rear control arms. Didn't have the front, which are supposed to be three seven eighths inch. I didn't have seven inch tubes, so I made these for one inch tube and then made an adapter for the front. Anyway, I, we increased the front okay. tubular control arm size by an eighth of an inch. So yes. you're strong. Got the tabs made. So the control arms are mounted. I rack is kind mounted of mounted. It's, I haven't welded it in yet, but that's kind of where it's going to go. Okay, I'm sure you've probably got this on your GoPro here, yep. but just to overview this for bad me. Boy. Oh, shoot. I saw a picture of this. 20, at 9,000 RPM at, or 4,500 RPM on the pump, it flowed 22, 23 gallons of Dang. fuel, so that's a big pump. So this is, we had a different pump that just came last, I don't know, a couple months ago for dad's car prior to this project taking over. We started doing the math, called the guys at Aeromotive, and they're like, need more pumps. Because so. yeah, we were on gasoline and yep. we're going on alcohol, so it's at least twice as much, plus we're turning it up a little. Right, so got the pump. That's nice. That's awesome. That came in while I was gone. There's new pumps in the back, too, for the gas tank, so let's no, go check. No, new pump in the back for over here. Oh, it's over here. So, oh, right, well, there at least the, the, the nice thing about this thing is it's got everything built in. So these are the, the dual... outlets, the vent, the return. This I mean, is the dual phantom kit. Uh, that'll just sit down in and everything's together in the hole. And then our nice. somewhere here there's a holly Jeez. cap that will go up here. That's a good looking tank. Have you done the math yet on how how big that's going to be? It's kind of hard to do. Because of the yes, shape? It just roughed it up 25, 26 gallons. Looks somewhere. like a streetcar to me. Yeah. Sounds like a streetcar to me. Okay, let's check out the back. This is where all the change has been going on. Oh, shoot. Looks like a fast car. <laughs> Tail lights. Tail lights. Oh, yeah. Those look good. These are brand new. They just came in, too. Whole assemblies. I didn't even have to put them together. 
So I think that kind of gives a glimpse of how everything's going to be new chrome, or at least polished chrome with the rough paint. I think that's going to look nice. So let's talk about this, because that's a lot different. Yeah, that's a lot different. So we had to cut it out. This is, I don't remember where I'm at. We're sitting on a block there, because we're measuring for axles. So the rear end's not at actual ride height right now. But that's probably about where the wheelie bars will be most of the time. But we can raise them. The conditions call for it. We can raise the wheelie bars up a lot or squat the car and it will hit the back of the car. Very nice. So that looks really good. I also see you got these push buttons in, ready to go. Nice, huh? It looks good. It seems like you got more work done when I wasn't I know. Here. How's that work? Dang. You need to leave again. <laughs> it turns out. Go to, where is it you're going? You're going to Tucson. Tucson in six days, so. Six days? Yeah. Oh, bummer. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> More work to get done while it's gone. It's okay. Um, so then these bars also drop those. It's looking good back here. Do you want to see the gas tank in there and then I'll pop the trunk lid on because it looks really good with the trunk yeah, lid. Yeah, let's see that. Let's check that out. The gas tank is not a gas tank yet, but I have already stuck it in there just because I thought I wanted to see it. So if we can get it welded up and keep it looking this good. Yeah, right now it looks good. It's kind of hard because it work when they get started. Oh, that's going to look nice. I can tell. I mean, it's... I like on that. Side, it's only approximate where it's going to go. That looks really good. That's going to follow the shape of the trunk well. All that. That looks nice in there. And then... This is a Check little this harder out. than it has to be because um, the car is 16 inches off the ground right now, but... Once you get the feel for it, it's not so bad. So you snap these puppies in play. Come back here, and this will have a wing on it, so I don't know how it's going to be exactly when we get the wing on it. Oh, shoot. Done. That's awesome. It's so, easier to put on than it is to take off. So now, oh man, that looks good. You said you wanted to make that look like the factory option. A factory option, I, I think you were successful in that. That's the W45 is what they labeled that in 55. That's a <laughs> W45 option. You had to check it on the list. But, you know, they, they didn't supply the wheelie bars. Oh, you had to make like, those yourself? You know, they came, well, actually, I think it was an option. It was in oh, the trunk. They okay. didn't put them on is what I meant. Okay. But, you know, they, they made that notch so you could have those wheelie bars. Because yeah. they didn't know what a 265 was going to actually do. Oh, yeah. yeah they yeah, were yeah. afraid that it might stand it on the <laughs> That looks believable enough. Yeah. Looks like that. I think I can almost believe that story there. That looks really good, though. So we'll have trailer hitch. Hoping, fingers crossed, that we can actually leave the wheelie bars. That would be nice. So that way we don't have to find a place to stick them. And They're long, but the yeah. trailer tongue is fairly long, so... It may. This, these may just clear under the trailer. Oh, and look. The new wheels came in. Mags. Those look cool. Okay. Kill okay. Mag wheels. So, um, wow. Lots if, of work. If, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, if we're able to leave that, we're going to have to put the license plate. Well, I guess it'd be okay right here. Right there. I like it's that right up there. up a little bit high is the problem. Except, it, but the car's so low, that's normal. <laughs> So that's the same height off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That works. Okay. Anyways, there's lots of work done. Hopefully, the GoPro has all that. It has some. There may be some rock and roll in the back. That's now. the only thing. We have a, a music debate here because I'm the YouTube music police over here. I don't, don't wanna... work without music. He doesn't. He can't go for like five minutes. He's like, the silence is deafening, so. It kills me. <laughs> we I have to. have natural ringing in my ear, so I want to <laughs> deafen that down. <laughs> so, anyways, fingers crossed. Anyways, lots of work, lots of work done. Lots more to go, but it's looking really, really good. <laughs>
Alex has gone to LS Fest. I'm not good at this. She normally coaches me into what she wants me to talk about, but she gave me the instructions to keep you guys informed. I failed last night on my GoPro over here. I forgot about it because I'm not used to that. Anyway, I did get the wheelie bars ready. So everything's built. This is an inch and a half tube, upper tube, an inch and a quarter, lower tube, Pro Mod, 84 inch wheelie bar kit. I think she's covered that already. But it's welded, it's assembled, it's on the car. The tabs are on the rear end. So I raised the wheelie bars based off measurements from the ground probably the highest that they'll be. So they're at the extreme height right now, and I've got to allow for squat in the body to the rear end. So what I did was obviously, without cutting this panel out, that wasn't gonna work. You know, I knew it was coming, but I didn't know exactly what it would be like. So I had all these tubes, and I originally intended to put the gas tank in the car from underneath and let it hang down. That's called not thinking ahead. I thought I was, but I, would, I wasn't. I didn't consider. So what I'm going to do is now that I see the wheelie bars on the car, I've cut the pan out. I'm going to take these X bars, I'm going to put them down on the lower bars like they typically are on other cars. And then the gas tank is going to protrude up out of the frame, come back here, kind of where it just fits under the trunk lid so I can get 23, 4, 5 gallons. I think I figured that I could get as much as 27 gallons in there. But that's coming next. What I did was instead of just cutting this out, which the each side of this will be welded to the frame rail, but so it'd be strong enough. But instead of just doing that and then cutting a chunk out of the trunk lid, I wanted to kind of continue the theme of the rear pan all the way around, and I'm in the middle of that process right now. So I took some masonite and made a couple different patterns. And the first one I made. It was a little taller. I just I decided I just didn't need that much height, that much clearance, and I might. That may be a mistake. But the second one was a little shorter, so I went in between and put made this one out of steel. And I've got it welded in on both sides, but this is just tacked. This side I've actually welded solid. That's what I'm working on this morning. And I'm burning it in really hard, really hot. So I can come back and put a radius on it. You probably can't see it in the video, but that's rounded versus where it's just tacked as square. I don't want that square. So this radius will mimic this factory radius here. And then I'll come in behind. I'm going to cut this lip out. This flange will come up around and down that side. So it'll look somewhat factory. I've got a shape it as I weld on this, this I went heavy this is 16 gauge which is a sixteenth of an inch which is obviously thicker than the body itself but I wanted some strength here because when you weld on it it's going to pull and warp so what I'm going to do is get continue around come up under here get all this welded and ground and then I may have to slice it a few times to get the the arch for the back of the trunk lid back in and then I'll weld those slices up I may be able to just pry it. I don't know yet, but that's that's the next step. Right now, I'm just getting it radius welded and ground, and then I'll get this back flange. The back flange will actually be a back boxing plate, kind of like this one. So it'll tie the bottom flange and the top flange together, but it'll stick up, so it'll just look like this.
getting ready to put the trunk lid on. Pretty big step. The notch is done. No, that's solid. I'm actually going to use it as the rear trailer hitch mount. I've got a plate in here. Once the body's welded on, I'll weld this plate that's welded to my receiver tube and then the other end of this receiver tube is welded to the frame. So that's going to be very strong. I lowered the bars. I can fit my gas tank in here now. It'll actually bubble up like this. The street tank pumps will be here. The filler will be here. We'll have a lid and a trunk lid that will open up when we get to a gas station. Of course, you got to remember, this is going to be 16 inches lower. It's sitting 16 inches off the ground, so it'll be down here. We'll pop that lid, unscrew the cap, and be able to fill it with gas without taking the trunk lid off. Trunk lid is going to be fairly easy because of these quick latches. They're, they're pretty cool. I like them better than Zeus fasteners, but you just pop that and you know, don't have to have a wrench or a pin that we can lose. I'm pretty happy with the the appearance. So it'll literally just sit on there. Snap, 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 snap. There'll be probably eight eight of these in the trunk lid, and that's only because you know I have four in my 55, but I also don't have a wing and I'm not going 200 miles an hour. So there's gonna be a lot of pressure right here. But they'll literally just snap on. So license plate will be up here probably or over here maybe. Parachute pack will come up. It'll be out here just underneath the wing. And then that's just open. So I've got plenty of wheelie bar clearance. We're getting ready to make some tabs to put these on. I'm gonna come in a couple inches like this. Maybe two here, a couple up here. So that'll make the trunk lid a pretty solid piece. So we're getting ready to make some tabs for this. I'll show you a little bit about how to do that. And then we'll, I'm gonna actually bolt them to the drip rail inside the trunk and put these on the lid itself. So we'll get, get going on that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is use some eighth inch aluminum plate, a piece of scrap laying around. I'm gonna make my tabs an inch and a half wide. So it'll be like that. Then I'll bore, that's a three quarter inch hole. I'll bore three quarter inch holes in them and then I'll position them on the drip rail where I want them, where they come, because the drip rail varies in width as it goes around that trunk. So I'm gonna make them extra long. I'm gonna make them where I can go from the edge of the body where the trunk opening is to two inches to the center of this. So I'm gonna make my tabs probably three inches long. I'll go ahead and make a dozen of them, but I'm going to use this factory edge on the plate to start with. So all I'm going to do is take a carpenter square. Best thing about those is one side's two inches wide, the other side's an inch and a half wide. So instead of getting all complicated and CAD cammed and designing it on CAD system and then doing a finite and ele element analysis on it, I'm just winging it. It's the way I do things. So there's an inch and a half gap right here. We're just gonna rip this piece on the big band saw. two and a half inches long. That's got a little bit of an angle on that end, so let's cut it off. What I'm gonna do, instead of measuring each one of them, I'm gonna make a mark on the table. This isn't, it doesn't have to be accurate, because I'm gonna cut each one of them off after I put them up to the car and mark them. I'm going to take my dozen plates, which you can tell they're pretty close. You know, and I'm using a fat tipped pin. So when, once the burrs are knocked off the edge, those are all, they're all very close to two inches and I don't care because I'm going to cut them off anyway. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, so all I'm doing is knocking the sharp edges off so I can draw a radius around the end of it. And I'll, I'll saw that on a bench saw and I'll show you how. But I'm going to do all the rest of these. And when I'm all finished, I'll use the big sander behind the three inch belt to, to clean up the saw marks on the edge so they'll look nice. So I'll get these done and then we'll come back for some more. What I'm going to do now, this is the way I, I do things. Other people do it differently. I'm not going to CNC these. I'm just going to, I dropped my brand new pin a minute ago and it hit right on the tip. So it's making a fat mark, but I, I'll just cut. What you do when you do that is you want to cut away the, the black. I want to get rid of the black. So it doesn't really matter that the tip is fat. So I'm going to mark each one of these and then we'll take them over to the bandsaw. You know, I just realized with me talking, I forgot one of the most important steps. This is how I get the center. So put it back on here. I like the center. I may have to get a different pin. That one looks like a quarter inch fatty marker. Okay, so we'll do all three, all 12 of these and then we'll take them over to the saw and do the outer radius right here. My dad used to say, you're not building a piano. So, meaning that it doesn't have to be that accurate. I mean, you can just guess at it. So, I'm gonna knock the holes in these. I'll go ahead and drill them before we round the ends on the bandsaw. We're gonna drill a few of these. In. burr on the back with this soft aluminum. So I'm just going to knock the burrs off each one of them. They're all drilled and deburred. I'm going to radius them. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat, but I try to do things as quickly as possible, especially when it's not got to be that accurate. Okay, there's all 12 of them cut, kind of shape. I'm gonna go over to the sander now and just finish that out. That's kind of what they look like, crap. So now we'll sand them on the sander. I'll, I'll go through a couple of those just to show you. There is right way and wrong way to do a sander. You can, anybody can sand, but they don't come out looking good. I'll give you a little demo. What I'm gonna do is one side is factory edge. So I'll just touch that. The other side saw edge, it looks terrible. So you can come in like this and go around and I'll show you what that looks like and it'll look way better. But then I'm gonna come back in, do half and do half. And then I'll finish it off on the little sander and then you'll see how the sander marks, the grit marks will go around the bracket instead of up and down like this saw mark is. So we'll do a few of these here. Every car I build is one off, so I could have these things cut and have a box full of them. Problem is I may not use them again, may never use them again. Every bracket, everything I do is always different than the one before, so it's easier for me. I'm going to have in a dozen brackets, I'm going to have five or six minutes. <laughs>
Okay, there's all 12 of them drilled, cut, shaped. So they're getting closer to looking like factory made. Okay, so that's before, that's off of the 36 belt, kind of rough. So all the brackets are ready to go. They're just extra long brackets at this point. What I did was I came in here and eyeballed kind of where I thought I wanted the hole in relation to the radius here. And then I marked and drilled two holes. They're not accurate. They don't have to be. I took the bracket and drilled it to match, so they go up here. I'll bolt this in. I took it, you can tell, I just, I, this is at an angle. This drip rail is different all the way around. There was nothing standard about this drip rail on a 55. It's narrow, it gets narrower up there. So each one's gonna be custom fit, but I went over to the brake and I bent it at an angle. So we got it pretty close. I'm gonna bolt the bracket on here. I will put anti-seize on these bowls because they're stainless, but I'm just doing this sort of first one here. So that's nice and tight. So that's a done deal. Then we can take our pin and put in here, but I can see that that bracket is twisted and that's just because of the irregularity of this drip rail. But looking down here, I can see, so I'm gonna take my adjuster this is a snap-on bracket adjuster. I'm gonna put it on here. Give it a little adjustment. I think it needs to adjust maybe just a little bit out this way. Not much. Put our quick latch from Summit. We ordered these directly from Summit. They're quick latch brand, but Summit keeps them in stock. You can get different diameter bezels on them. I think this one's one inch if I remember right. So that'll go there and I'm just eyeballing. If I take a, another bracket, see if that, if that was on there and tightened up, that would set the in and out based on this adjustment. So that's pretty close. So now when I put the trunk lid on without this, without this pin in here, I'll reach in and drill from the inside, drill straight through the trunk lid. Then I'll open the hole up to three quarter inch. So we can just bolt this black bezel on. So it just has a nut and then snap trunk lid will be attached. So I just got, I don't know how many, what we decide two, four, Six, eight, I think we got seven more to go.
final thoughts. I don't know where we're at. I don't know that you know where we're at, but I think there's been a lot done. I know trunk lid, the back panel, and then wheelie bars. What do you think? I don't, <laughs> honestly don't remember. We've been filming <laughs> as much as we could. There's times that we'd be doing something and think, you know, 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, think, crap, I should have filmed that. But I'm used to working, not filming. So <laughs> without you pushing the camera, I may have missed some stuff. But So um, overall, so what's your favorite part here? You've got the trunk lid, fastening, the rear panel, and then the wheelie bars. The what's your favorite and one? And the taillights. And the taillights. What's my favorite part to do or what's my favorite part to look at? Your favorite result so far. Um, the wheelie bars are my favorite result. Okay. And I'm not even a wheelie bar I was going to say, that surprised me when you said that. But th those things are like almost like work of art. I mean, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of work in those wheelie bars. Okay. Don't ever take a wheelie bar manufacturing guy for, for granted, granted because there's a ton of work. To I think that's it for now, as long as you're done. Okay. Also, check out what came. Holy smokes, these are huge. So these are the new carbon wheel tubs, carbon fiber wheel tubs that ordered from Summit. Um, I'll link those below so you can see them, but they're, they're giant, giant. You want to see how big they are? They're giant. I mean, literally, what can we do here? I don't know how to put it maybe next to the car. So that way for a Let's size put it reference. Next to this front wheel here. Okay. Those are Caltrack bars. Oh. Yeah, it's a little, little floppy. That's a front wheel. That's a 15 inch. 27 inch tall. That's a tall, tall. Okay, tall say, front tire. That's that still doesn't show justice. Maybe take it to the. I don't know how to make it. Oh, put Maybe it put it next to mom. <laughs> she can fit in like a dog. She's hey, fine. Come here, Mika. Come Mika, here. Come here. Come here, Mika. Come here. We're using you for reference. Oh look, she's so excited. She look at did. you go. You're so happy. Come go. Come here. Can you sit right here? Sit down right here. Sit down, Mika. Sit down. Good, Good girl. girl. Look here. No, come here. Come here. Come here. No, 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 no. Ah! Come here. It's okay. It's okay. Look, come in here. See your new house. Go to your house, Mika. You want to go in your house? Anyway, you can see that could be a dog house. She said you fooled me. You want to go in here? Look, there's probably food in there. Go, Mika. There might be a steak. Well, here. This is better. Here, yeah. Maybe we could put it next to the actual wheel and tire. Wow. Big wheel tub. That's a big tire, too. Big tire, big wheel tub. But you got to consider it's going to be narrowed down to fit. They're built oversized. And then you got to have room for growth. Yep. So, anyways, it looks big, but it's going to fit. But the carbon looks nice. You can see it's laid nice. This is, what is what is this? Wild, wild side. side. Wild side composites, which were really great to work with. There was actually ran into an order like accidentally got deleted and he actually called me and told me that it had been deleted and he didn't want to not send them so that was nice okay so that's pretty much it for this video i actually fun fact don't know what all footage is going to be in this yet because i was not the run running what not the one running the gopro this time so should be lots of good stuff. Are you awesome. blaming that on me? I'm just saying. I don't know what's in there. We're getting ready to find out. So. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> so, we'll see what video there is to be made out of this. But lots of progress was made. Still lots of progress to go, but it is moving. And that is it for now. So, thank you guys so much for watching. There's going to be a lot more to come. But as always, be happy, go fast, and stay pretty. I will see you guys next time.